Being a self-taught artist is good, and here's why. So reason one being that you're forced to find the style that you're comfortable with. And actually, there's a lot of times where I'll mention that comfort actually isn't really a good thing, but in this situation, it really is. It can be all the difference. So. For example, you find anything from your own unique brushstroke style to how loose or how tight you paint, to the subjects you paint, to the colors you naturally gravitate to, and those are all really important when finding your identity as an artist. For example, through self-taught painting, I found that I had a natural tendency to want to paint some earth tone colors and colors that were warmer. Those type of colors naturally resonated with me and I still do those colors to this day and they're my favorites and those are the colors that I'm most comfortable painting. I also had a natural tendency to want to paint inanimate objects in the form of still lifes and through all these things that I've learned about myself it seems that some of my introverted personality traits show through some of my paintings and I actually find that to be quite cool and interesting. I mean I often paint a lot of objects with uh, in solitude or even if not there's a lot of atmosphere around them meaning a lot of space above below the sides always framed pretty well and again that's possibly some of my personality showing through the art reason two that being a self-taught painter or artist is good is because there's lots of room for freedom and what do i mean by this i mean that there's lots of room for creating without lots of critique or grading and sometimes critique or grading can be good it only becomes a problem when the instructor uses their own personal taste to critique or grade and what do i mean by this that means maybe they personally have an opinion about something the type of style you do how loose you paint how tight you paint and they decide well doing it that way is wrong and actually doing it that way may not actually be wrong it may just be it may just end up being a difference in personal taste between you and the instructor one of the most important things you can take away from this video is that personal taste and objective aesthetic beauty are two completely different things there is some overlap but now it's fine if they're giving you advice and they're saying they prefer you do this thing over this thing because there's good reasoning behind it they've seen it'd be a mistake in the past for other people that they've taught but if it's coming at you like you have to do this or it's wrong then that actually can be destructive towards your artistic growth again there's a difference between personal taste and objective aesthetic beauty which is a real thing i think it's great to be taught the basic fundamentals uh, the elements and the principles if you would those tools are actually very useful in maximizing your artistic skill but there's a lot of other things that should merely just be looked at as extra opportunities to increase your how well-rounded you are as an artist and you may actually end up adopting some of those techniques into your own style or you may end up changing your style completely because of that here's a good example so before I started painting in the style that I do now, which is my go-to, this wet and wet, or the term is a la prima style, uh, I was painting in layers and I was kind of taking images from online and kind of collaging them onto the canvas and things were, it took me days, it was very complicated. I had to kind of imagine how the, the light would hit certain things and that was definitely, I mean, it was good for my artistic growth, but it definitely was a lot more work than I needed to do. I wasn't comfortable doing it. And honestly, if I continue doing things that way, I may not still even be painting today. So I think it's good to discover new techniques and find out things for yourself. So yeah, it felt like I was in a battle every day, uh, every time I'd sit down at the easel to paint. I mean, the results were all right, but would I ever do that again? Definitely not. Reason three for being a self-taught artist and why it's good is because you can tell people you're a self-taught artist and honestly that's a pretty cool thing but no seriously if you were able to endure the early stages of not really knowing what you were doing kind of just blindly creating from your head or however you started then that probably means you were actually destined to be a creator or an artist and just create cool things which is definitely something that not many people get to say now to actually give a counter argument to being self-taught the thing I noticed with a lot of people who are self-taught, they have a 
false sense of how good they are possibly like even me for example when i was first making things i was just so proud i was able to make things without other people's help and i was just like wow i'm good family friends were saying oh my gosh you paint you made that that's so cool so you kind of get this a little bit of an ego or not if not an ego just you may think you're better than you are so it's important to actually get some of that critique or get some of that advice from people who've had lots more experience it could be in any artistic field but it's important to actually get that and learn how to take criticism as well what i was mentioning earlier was knowing the difference between when someone has a personal taste like they prefer certain things to be this way rather than actual constructive criticism so that's one important thing to know knowing when things are constructive and actually needing constructive versus when people are just they just don't like your style and that's just sometimes how it is actually the reason that some of these paintings that you see here look way different than the counterpart that they used to look like is from a critique that i got from a professor i got to know when i was in college so and i actually at first i questioned it but i realized it was constructive uh it didn't compromise my style at all i was just told to use a little more refinement and it ended up working out pretty well and even if i don't end up painting like this permanently or from now on at least i know how to do it when to incorporate it and it can it's definitely increase my art knowledge for future paintings a lot of times in art you just don't know what you don't know uh, I'll give you another example about myself. So I used to just, I remember I said I gravitated towards warm colors a lot. There was a time when I would strictly just do warm colors. There would barely be any contrast. It would just be, you know, red, yellow, all, you know, the warm colors. And the painting may, may or not, may not have been balanced all the way. Now it would end up still being decent because I had some of the other fundamentals but some of the things some of the important things that I learned that I can tell you now is the importance of contrast not just in how light versus how dark something is but contrast of temperature uh, contrast of color uh, like complementary opposites contrast of texture and incorporating those all into one painting and not just being uh, narrow-minded like binary just making sure that even contrast of I don't know balance any, anything like that those are some things that you would think that I thought I would know but I didn't know until I was actually told it by someone else and it actually greatly improved my paintings uh, for the better all right but that's pretty much all um, if you enjoyed it please subscribe like the video and thank you